What's up, everybody? My name is Godzi, and welcome back to another episode of Wonderful Every Day Down the Rabbit Hole. Last episode, Takuji fucking fucked a desk, and then had the audacity to refer to Yuki and Ayana as nasty women when he had just finished fucking a desk. So that's ironic, ain't it? It was a very difficult episode to take seriously, because he fucked a desk. And then this weird ghost started chasing him, called Anxiety, I think it was called. So, yeah, let's just continue, because, whew, hopefully there's not gonna be anything, again, as comically weird, at least, as Takuji fucking a desk, but I probably shouldn't get my hopes up. So, let's continue. What was that? A monster? No, something like that can't exist. Either way, I should be safe here. That's right, there are a lot of people here. I can hide in the crowd. I won't stand out from everyone else. If I move around like a normal member of the crowd, if I walk like everyone else, if I go with the flow and walk, I just match up with them. Before, I just wasn't able to blend in, because I stood out. I was bullied by everyone, but this time I should be fine. I won't make the same mistake twice. I won't. Alright, this is good. You're doing well. I'm not standing out. That's right, you can be relieved. Relief. Just walk like this, then you can be calm for eternity. That's what my father always said. Go along with the stream. The stream continues on for eternity. There's no end. There's no... So you have to do your best here. Do your best. If you don't, if you don't, the end will. The end that my mother feared. To me too. Just like Takashima. The end. From the roof, I'll end it. What I can see from the roof is... What I can see is... The sky. The sky? Ah! Oh, wow, it's red. Why is it that color? That's not the color of sunset. That's just like... That's just like... Huh? Oh, he's back. Yay! <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> Being watched. Being watched! Even here! Even here I've been exposed. The same mistake. Ah! They're watching me. They're watching- Okay, okay, got it. Watching me, watching me. They're watching me! Ah! Why? Why? I'm always, always, and now I'm calm. <laughs> now that I've run this far, this far. Huh? Now you ended up in front of the apartment building. That's not good. Why am I here? This is the place Takashima died. Why am I here? Just now. What was that? Who is it? Is someone there? I just heard a voice. Huh? Who is it? Someone's playing a prank on me, right? I mean, it's darkness here. Is it gonna be Takashima, uh, Takazombie Taka Zombie again? Who the hell is it? A prank? All of the stuff I've been seeing? Even that huge monster? How? How they make me see something like that? Who is it? I figured. <laughs> is this her talking? I can only imagine. The world. The world will end on the 20th. Sakushima? Yo, I have to save the world. Just like Mother said. What? Wait, wait, wait. Oh no, wait, she said that too. Hmm. Why is Takashima? Why does she know about that prediction? Why does she know about my mother? Ugh. I tried to run from that spot, and yet my body wouldn't move. But I still tried to force my body to move. My body moved slowly, like I was submerged in a viscous liquid. Why is this happening? This- oh no, it's zooming in again. <laughs> ah, this can't be reality. A dead person can't come after me. I tried to run from Takashima Zakuro, but I couldn't put any distance between us. This feeling. That's right, this feeling. A feeling ingrained in my body. My body grew heavy when I tried to run as if I was moving in slow motion. This is a dream. This can't be anything other than a dream. This can't. Something like this. Bah! I figured again. <laughs> there wasn't even a sound that time. Is that intentional or what? Up. Up. Wake up. Oh. Wait. Excuse me. Who are you? 
Ririru? Are you an actual character, or is he hallucinating again? <laughs> this is... Oh, cool, she has a sprite. <laughs> Uh, is that important, or is it just another one of his delusions? What? Hello? Huh? Hello, Takaji. Ah! The picture on the wall! The picture on the wall is talking! <laughs> Don't be afraid. Ah! Don't be afraid! <laughs> you made me yell. Takaji? Yes? And I guess you've calmed down, huh? What do you mean, calm? Um... Takaji? Do you know who I am? Ririru? Bingo bingo! Yes, I'm the Maho Shoujo Ririru! Huh? But Ririru is... Yes, I'm the Maho Shoujo Ririru! An anime. <laughs> yes, I'm the Maho Shoujo Ririru! This is a picture I drew. Yes, I'm the Maho Shoujo Ririru! It's just fiction. Yes, I'm the Maho Shoujo Ririru. Fiction? Yeah, I'm the Maho Shoujo Fiction? Fiction? <laughs> yes, I'm the Maho Shoujo Ririru. This is, yeah, a delusion. Fiction? How the fuck do you pronounce it with backslashes in there? Yes, I'm the Maho Shoujo Ririru. Yes. This, okay, this is... Is this supposed to do anything with voices? I'm curious. Like, let's let's see. So, no. Yeah, I hear voices. That's for sure. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit higher. Okay, so yeah, it is supposed to be completely incomprehensible. Got it! Alright, cool. Bye-bye. The voices are actually a lot quieter than I expected them to be. Yes, I'm the Maho Shoujo Ririru. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> I'm gathering God's dreams that have been scattered throughout the world. I actually haven't gathered them all yet. <laughs> Though on TV I've collected them all and returned to the country of magic. I'm a bit of a dunce, so I'm working overtime. Ah. Are you alright? Uh, I'm fine, yeah. I can only appear here because you always talk to me. Because I talk to you? That's right, that's why I'm here. You're here. Here. Here is here. P to P? There is there. Q to Q. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. Oh no, she's saying those. P? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> then over there? Q. Then right here. PVQ. I, that's not a V, but whatever. Really? P jump jump bit. That bit pickle pa 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 pa. Not P and Q. What what are P and Q supposed to mean in this scenario? I jump jump my pa pa. You're funny. X equals infinity. Cool. Ah. Yes, I'm the Mahoshi Juriru. But yeah, come on, stop saying that. <laughs> Where are you? Yeah, da 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 da. Where am I? Oh my fucking god. This is really weird. Where are we? We. Where? Where? <laughs> what do you mean? Isn't that obvious? She looked at me, intrigued. Here is here. That's right. Wait. Yeah, okay. By the way, there is there. Riru pointed toward the next toward the, toward the room next to us. Its alias is the new school building's foundation. <laughs> so this is the foundation too. <laughs> well, no, that was her again. Okay. You're strange, Takaji. <laughs> Why are you talking saying things I don't understand? It's not like I know that you're talking about when you suddenly use foreign word wait. It's not like I know what you're talking about when you suddenly use foreign words like that. Okay. Foreign words? Did I just say something to Ririru in a foreign language? I can't understand hard stuff like that. Just talk normally. Sorry. That wasn't a foreign language. I feel like I might have just talked using some kind of symbols. Yep. 
Using strange symbols that both seemed and didn't seem to have some logic behind them. Symbols with some logic behind them? Were those some kind of words? And before that, I spoke some language. I talked to her in some language for a few seconds after I met her. What kind of words were those? What kind of... Ah, that was Japanese. Then what are we speaking now? It's Japanese. We're speaking Japanese now. There's no problem. Riru and I are speaking in Japanese. That's totally normal. I'm getting confused. <laughs> There's nothing strange happening. The world is completely relaxed. That's right, the world is relaxed. There's nothing scary. There's nothing special. The world is just completely relaxed. <laughs> are you alright? No! Oh, sure. There's no problem. Riru looked at me with concern. I'm sorry. Wait, no. Who's talking? Talk to me. I'm sorry to make you worry, but I'm fine now. Really? Yeah, really, I'm fine. That's right, there's nothing strange, there's nothing suspicious. Relax, relax, relax. Relax, relax, relax! Or, no, he... No, she's saying that too. Okay. <laughs> Christ, sometimes it's really difficult. A charm of relaxation. Your mother taught you that. Why do you know that? Of course I do, I'm a specialist in magic after all. I know about that charm. That makes sense. That's right, that's what it is. It's completely natural. It's nothing to be surprised about. Something normal. I guess so. When she says it like that, it sounds right. Yeah, I was confused. Wait. Okay, no. But now I'm fine. I'm confused. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Hakuji, you look down. Huh? I'm not really feeling down, but... You're confused? Oh, well... Yeah? Because your mother's prediction is taking shape? Huh? The end of the world and the arrival of the Savior on July 20th, 2012. You heard that story over and over from your mother, right? I did, but that was just her delusion. You don't believe your mother? Of course not. There's no way her prediction will come true. If it did come true, then it wouldn't have died. <laughs> okay. Don't you just want to believe it won't come true? What do you mean? Because you feel like you've been betrayed? That's not it. That is it. You resent your mother. Resent. Yes, I resent my mother. Who would be able to forgive that kind of mother? She abused me so much, and then abandoned me in the end. Maybe she didn't abandon me, but ultimately she did die of... But try to remember. Remember? The reason you exist right now. The reason Mami Atakuji is here. The reason I exist. Or rather, the cause of your existence. The cause of my existence. That's right, after all, you're... I'm... A. You're already A. What? Okay, she did say that twice. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of random blanks sometimes. Which, I'm sure is important. But... Still, it's a little disorienting. <laughs> And yet, you exist. Right here. What- what is the reason for your existence as Mami Atakuji? The reason I exist? It's because... You're the savior, isn't it? The savior? Have you forgotten the reason your mother was so harsh? The reason my mother was so harsh? Yes. Why was your mother so tough on you? Have you forgotten that reason? I haven't forgotten, but... But that's... That's a delusion. So then why were you able to continue being Mami Atakuji after that happened? That's... For what reason were you born? That's... I'm... The Savior! Weren't you born so that you could become the Savior? I don't care about any of that. My mother is dead. She's gone. She has nothing to do with me. She has nothing to do with you? Even though you exist. As long as you continue to exist, there is no contradiction in your mother's prediction. The very reason for your existence is to return the world to the sky, is it not? Return the world to the sky. A savior born for that purpose. Those words, how many hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, tens of millions, tens of billions of times did I hear those words? How many times did I hear about the reason for my existence? But, then what do you want to do? What do you have to look forward to in life? Huh? Do you think a meaningful life is waiting for you? Can you find meaning in your life? That's rude. Even I might have a meaningful life. 
Alright, then what would make your life meaningful? Huh? Well, well, I'll hit it big. I'll probably have some hidden talent. So that's a meaningful life. Yeah, then I would have a bunch of money and I could do whatever I wanted. If you have money, you can do anything. Can you buy love with money? Of course, all women take men just for their money. I wonder, so then what about pimps? Only good looking men can do that. So then a meaningful life is about having money and looking good. That's right. If you're rich and beautiful, your life is meaningful. If you're rich and beautiful for just one day, can you say that there was meaning to your life? One day isn't enough. It should be for longer than that. Why does it need to be for longer than that? Because if those wonderful days ended after just one day, it wouldn't be worth anything. Those days should go on forever. Forever? Happiness that continues for eternity. That's what Otanashi Ayana was talking about. Eternal happiness is no different from hell, because it lasts for eternity. No matter how meaningful one's life is, without a proper end, it's more like horror. So, living forever is no good. No, it doesn't have to be forever. It would be fine if it was just a moderately long life. How long? Until you start getting tired of it. How long is that? You can't know until you're there. Is that the meaning in your life? Meaning in life, that's kind of strange. Isn't living a happy life meaning enough? Something else. That's it. A meaningful life also means having offspring. Offspring? Yeah, passing on your genes. Your genes, huh? That's the meaning of life. Life forms have meaning because they can pass on their genes. In other words, there's no meaning to your life if you're poor, ugly, and have no children. That's right. That kind of life is pointless. <laughs> there's no meaning in a life where you don't pass on your genes. I see. Life has meaning because you can pass on your genes. Yeah, that's right. It's obvious, isn't it? Even though it would all disappear regardless? Huh? Yeah? You said there was meaning to a life form if it passed on its genes. Is that true even if the end of the universe comes and everything disappears? Huh? Yeah? it. once the end of the universe comes, it'll all disappear. And even if there is no end to the universe, entropy will reach a maximum state and the universe will meet its death. Maximum entropy? The entire universe will reach thermodynamic equilibrium. Either way, it's impossible for life forms to continue passing under genes for eternity. Someday, there will be an end. But if it's long enough, isn't that good enough? In the infinity of time, any number of years is just an instant because it is limited. Since the descendants of humanity can't live on forever, they live on for just an instant. From what you're saying, a meaningful existence just sounds like putting off the inevitable. Okay. The meaning to human life. The reason life exists. It's like you're just stretching out your happiness for as long as possible and then proclaiming life to be meaningful. The length of happiness. Is that the meaning to your life? That's... I don't know anything about infinity. I'm not talking about all that hard stuff. There might not be any meaning to human life, but... But still, I want to live. I can't believe in the end of the world. I can't stand the thought that I'll soon die. I don't care about the reasoning, I just don't want to die. That's all. To me, 10,000 years in an instant can't be the same. So, I... I really am scared. Of course I'm scared of dying. That'd mean losing everything. But... Okay, that is her. <laughs> Still, when you were a child, you believed what your mother told you up until that moment, right? Until that moment. No? What was that image? I just saw something flash by. So did I. The prediction written on Takashima's desk. There were lots of other strange things too, right? And then it's all true. My mother's prediction and Takashima's prediction. The world will end. Yeah, but don't worry. Of course I'm going to worry. How could I not worry? I did not mean to write Black. Why? You're the savior. Why would the world's savior be afraid of the end of the world? What? Riru put her hand on my forehead. Anyway, please take a journey of a hundred million years. What do you mean a hundred million years? Deek? Uh, um, okay. Nothing there had to be censored. I'm glad that it didn't go through that stuff. <laughs> that was it. 
Oh shoot, he might not have regained his memories as Takuji. I guess he forgot who he was after experiencing a hundred million years of evolution. Well then... A! Ah! Okay, great, dude. <laughs> Are you alright? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I just... I just... Just? No, not just now. Until now, I was... You just saw your genetic memory. My genetic memory? Yeah, this isn't one of my powers. Your body had that function, and I just hit the switch. The switch? That's right! Before humans are born, they see the memories of all life in their mother's womb. From the beginning to their own par parents. They remember the shapes, from plankton to fish, from fish to reptiles, from reptiles to... And it keeps going like that. I've heard of this. I've read this somewhere. That's... That's... The fetal dream. Hmm, so that's what they call it. No, there isn't really a scientific term for it. That theory isn't accepted by science, after all. <laughs> How did it feel to experience a hundred million years? Feel. Feels like it was an incredibly long time, but once it ended. Like reality, and yet like a dream. And like there was some meaning, and yet like there wasn't. Just after my hundred million years ended, I felt some kind of presentiment. Presentiment? Like another... omen. Omen? How was it? Oh, sorry. That's right. Once it ended, there was no trace left of the hundred million years. Okay, that is him. It wasn't just an instant. But looking at it now, it feels like you could say it was just an instant. That's how it feels. <laughs> That's a great answer. A great answer? Neither a philosopher nor a religious man could say something like that. But still. I'm, <laughs> I'm neither a philosopher nor a religious man. That's right, they can't say it, but you can. I guess so. Yeah, you're a part of God. A part of God? I'm a part of God? Hmm, you're all of him. All of him? Not just a part? Which is it? Hmm, both. I'm a part of and the entirety of God? Yeah, you're one and all. Hmm, I see. I have the power of God and anime on my side. <laughs> ah! Are you convinced? I'm not convinced. I'm still human. I can't follow that logic. It's like it has superseded normal reasoning. If there's something I do have, they're all just omens. Amazing, Takaji! That's a perfect answer. I can't believe you understand the omens already! Actually, you're gathering God's dreams, aren't you? And you can't- wait, 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 that's Takaji. <laughs> Actually, you're gathering God's dreams, aren't you? And you came to explain the end of the world to me. Which means the world really is going to. Like I said, there are only six days until the end. Are you scared, Takaji? A single instant for me can become a hundred million years. If I wanted, I could live for, oh god, 51 trillion, 8 billion, 400 million years. And either way, the length of time doesn't matter. Even if I were to die at this very moment, I wouldn't be afraid. Why? Because I'm already within the omen. <laughs> but you can't die. The beginning and end are inseparable, like the two faces of a coin. Unless you're freaking uh, Ren Muyang, that's his last name, who cut two coins in half to make trick coins. Fucking Ren, hate that guy. <laughs> Remember the words your mother said to you. My mother's words? The day the world will return to the sky. Yeah, that's it. You must return everything to the sky before the world is destroyed turn everything to the sky. I wonder if I can actually do that. God won't save the world. Angels won't save the world. If God doesn't do it, humans will. It won't be God that saves people. It'll be the savior, human himself, who will save people. In other words, that's me. I knew that. My mother always told me that from the time I was an infant. Why are you here, Ririru? To make your omen. Omen? To make it come to fruition. Fruition? Yeah, I can't explain it very well in human words. If I were to put it in words, it's a kind of infinity. A kind of infinity? Elep infinity. What's that? Hmm, like I said, I can't explain it very well. To put it another way, 
the end. The end? No, the end. The end. I know about that. That's the end. Sky. <laughs> the end of oh, Sky, right. Yes, that's what you will bring to fruition. End Sky. Fruition. You must bring it to fruition and then end it. Bring it to fruition and then end it. But isn't that basically death for a human? It's not death. Maybe I should call it the ultimate goal of existence. It's neither life nor death. It's neither existence nor non-existence. That's... that's... That's the time when the world will return to the sky. No, that's her now, okay. And sky. Okay. Hmm. July 14th. Okay. Splish. Hmm. Ah! This is... Why did I... Why did I sweep in a place like this? Ah! That's right! I saw that thing at the school gate. Then I ran into town. But he found me. Then I ran here. No, oh, Riruru. Riruru. Riruru was still just a picture. Was all that stuff yesterday a dream? A dream? Ow. I'd been sweeping on the concrete. My whole body hurt. Ow. Especially the harder parts of my body. The places where my bones stick out really hurt. Huh? The most painful part of my body wasn't boneful at all. It was around the base of my thigh. What's this? There was a bulge in my pocket. Something was in there. Oh, yeah, the phone. Huh? A broken cell phone. It was pretty small, so I'd forgotten all about it. Which means I accidentally took her cell phone. Takashima Sakuro's cell phone? A dream. That was all a dream, not reality. <laughs> How many times had I thought that? I thought this is a dream, not reality. <laughs> turned her cell phone on. <laughs> a dream. Reality. Ridiculous. What meaning do those words hold after I had seen that overwhelming world? Takashima Zakura was dead. After falling from that height, the outer case was almost entirely cracked. I slowly opened it. The hinge made a small cracking sound as I opened it, but there wasn't anything stopping me from using it. Dream and reality, huh? At the very least, now that this has come out of my pocket, Takashima's suicide was reality. But if- but only if this is reality... right now. I started using her phone. The outside was broken, but the inside was fine. It was probably in her pocket when she jumped. Must have fallen out when she hit the ground. That's why it's not completely broken. There's no password on this phone. I don't know. Anything about her. No, I probably hadn't wanted to know. What was happening to her. Her feelings. Her despair. Her pain was continuing within me. It was connected to me. So I hadn't looked. I acted like I didn't see. Because I knew. I hadn't looked at her. I never tried to understand her. My relationship with her. We'd met in my secret base. Takashima Zakuro. The time after our first meeting. But what I'd wanted was something normal. Not a bumpy relationship. What I wanted was... I didn't want to know her. I just wanted to have the relationship, without any of the bumps. Just a flat, even relationship. That's right. That's what I wanted. That would be a world with no depth. No bumps, no limits. Just the shallowest of worlds melding together. That's what it means for one human to get close to another. Holding hands, kissing, having sex. That's what I desired. I desired something completely natural. Starting as friends, then becoming lovers than having a physical relationship. I wanted something completely natural with no bumps. Until yesterday, I... I had never wanted to know her. I had never wanted to know what would happen to her. What would happen. Beyond the pain she held. Beyond the pain that fills the world. Takashima's limit. And my limit. And... The world's limit. But now I'm different. I understand what lies beyond her pain. I understand everything beyond it. Because now I am the savior. Because that is my fate. Right, Riruru? 
I spoke to the scribble of her on the wall. There was no response. And mother. What she desired. Now her desires are waiting to be fulfilled. The date she always spoke of, July 20th, 2012, is right before my eyes. I just noticed most of the graffiti around there is like making fun of Riru. <laughs> Like, this, uh, I saw this week's episode fucking sucked, or something like that there. <laughs> and die, you slut? I, I don't know. I took a deep breath, then looked at Takashima's email. What's written of her in here? The email here is a fragment of, here, of her. I started with her fragments. I started picking up the pieces of her, just as if they were pieces of flesh strewn across the sidewalk. To know her. And then a walk to the place of her pain. That is how this journey must begin. What Takashima saw, and what my mother saw. The first thing that appeared was an email from immediately before her suicide. It said, Usami, I don't know her. She had been sending messages to this person until right before her suicide. She'd frequently sent messages to her, the most recent being just one hour before her death, starting from the morning of that day. From Usami, subject good morning. It's today, Spiral Matai. Let's do our best. The world's fate is resting upon our shoulders. I'll be waiting at the Western Ticket Gate in Suginomiya Station at 6.30. World's fate is resting upon our shoulders, Spiral Matai. I'm guessing this must be one of the either Pope Girl or Glasses Girl, then. Spiral Matai. She talks about it like it's nothing. But that must mean jumping off the building. The message almost makes it sound like they're going out to the movies or something. Still, Spiral Matai is one of the things scratched into her desk. Alright, Usami again. That's cold, I'm your ally from the previous world. That aside, according to Ayumi's prediction- Oh no, no, don't let there be a character named Ayumi. I- no, there- no, don't. <laughs> Please, no. We can't we can't deal with this bullshit again. Tomorrow's ritual must- Tomorrow's ritual must happen at 642. On the 14th floor of apartment building 35 in Suginomiya. So, we should meet at the western ticket gate in Suginomiya Station at 6.30. Please don't be late, the fate of the world is at stake. Cold? Were they discussing something? Takashima was bullied, so maybe they met when she tried to talk to someone about it, but more importantly, an apartment building in Suginomiya. Uh, yeah, excuse me. I don't know building 35 very well, but that's right around the station. Suppose the last place I saw Takashima was that place. Which means they really were talking about jumping off that building when they said Spiral Matai. And Ayumi must be the other girl who committed suicide with them. Great! If we ever <laughs> learn more about those two, then that's gonna be great. <laughs> if you're confused or in the dark on why, I, why I'm concerned about her name being Ayumi, watch my Corpse Party Let's Play and you'll see why I can't stand that name. <laughs> there had been three corpses there. The simplest explanation was that the girls who were messaging her, Usami and Ayumi, were the girls who had committed suicide with her. Hmm. I went further back in the messages, the day before they committed suicide. They'd agreed to meet up near Suginomiya Station. I went further back and found the first message she'd received from Usami. I finally made contact with you, huh? I'm not sure if I should say, nice to meet you. The battle at the Stone Tower... Please respond when you remember the significance of these words. Also, you will probably experience a large change. It'll probably be a good thing. Wait, what was the date on that one? July 3rd. So it wasn't terribly long ago as far as this game is concerned. So wait. Oh, hold on. 2200.01. So that's 10 p.m. 10.01 p.m. Was it the 4th that she started suddenly running away from Takaji? Hmm. The first email from Usami. It had come at 10 at night on the 3rd day of this month. Thanks for telling me. Which means they only met recently. Takashima's response to this message was curt. Or rather, she didn't reply at all for quite a while. Looking at this message, it's just someone called Usami trying to make contact with her out of the blue. Takashima had suddenly gotten a message from a crazy person who she didn't know. Something like that. Anyone would be reluctant to answer a message like this. And yet. For some reason, Takashima seemed to have some interest when she wrote a reply. Okay. Nice to meet you. I'm the Cheshire Cat. 
I read your message, but I have never heard those words. I'm sorry. Though I am a bit curious, what is this large change that's going to happen to me? Huh. It looks like Sheshire Cat is Takashima's username. <laughs> this name shows up a lot. I guess she was blogging or using a social networking site. Well, that's not important. But I wonder why Takashima didn't keep ignoring Usami's creepy message. Maybe that sentence, you will probably experience a large change, caught her attention? Well, clearly. Girls really do have a weak spot for fortune telling, huh? This was Usami's response to Takashima's message. Thank you for your response. Now that I've received your message, I can confirm it. You are certainly our ally. The battle at the Stone Tower. You say you don't remember these words, but that's not a problem. And now it says July 9th. Okay. And the large change we predicted would happen to you- Oh wait, no, this is still her talking, huh? And the large change we predicted would happen to you was a change to your cognizance. The good thing is a person's death. Soon, one of your problems will disappear. An even creepier message. It's even clearer than in the last message that she's not normal. And yet, after receiving this message, Takashima started exchanging messages with her frequently. She didn't hold back. She started to get along with this creepy girl. Hmm. From Usam. Okay. You've probably suffered for a long time, but the only reason you're suffering is because your existence is correct. You suffer because you're correct, but the incorrect person who is tormenting you will die. Soon, one of your problems will disappear. They took advantage of her weakness. If I had reacted more quickly back then, Takashima wouldn't have gotten involved with them. That made me regret my actions. But still, who are these people? Is it one of those fad suicide groups? There used to be a lot of people looking to make suicide packs on the internet. They would gather people like this and all die together. Why don't they just die alone? Why do they try to drag other people down with them? But the incorrect person who is tormenting you will die. Huh. These hypocritical words made Takashima trust that crazy girl. After she got- oops. After she got this message from that person called Usami, Takashima decided to meet her in person. It's not clear what they talked about, what Takashima thought about it, or why they decided to commit suicide. Either way, it's clear that she was driven into a corner before she did it. The person who drove her into a corner. The reason for her suicide. Something immediately came to mind. Bullies? Because she was bullied, wasn't she? What the fuck? I just heard a knock. I think a bird ran into my window. Cool. I turned on the generator and sat in front of my computer. Are you checking the message board? Yep. <laughs> now then, the message board. The message board I administrate. The message board where all the school secrets are written. 15. Megu and Satoko's friendship thread. Yep. Couldn't we get in trouble for that? It seemed like she was broken. I hope she's totally broken. Then she won't be able to tell anyone, lol. We might have overdone it. If they find out, they won't just let us off with the suspension. Anyone could figure out what they were talking about now. Takashima had died. She jumped off an apartment building. No, the truth is that she was murdered. If I report them to the police, they'll probably be arrested. These two bullied and murdered Takashima Zakuro. They bullied her, tortured her, and murdered her bullied her to death. Huh. That's plenty of reason for the police to arrest them. I don't know what they would be charged with, though. Extortion, assault, anything would work. This is all the evidence they would need. But I'm not interested in any of that. It's not like I want to be the hero and get revenge for Takashima. I indifferently looked into their relationship. Takashima Zakuro, Akasaka Megu, and Kitami Satoko. I looked at the past posts. Anyway, I made this thread. You sure did. Are you sure no one else can see this board? Apparently. They started this thread about a year ago. They'd written these thoughtless sentences because they didn't feel human pain. Huh. They described their fun lifestyle here in this thread. They eased their pain by inflicting it on others. They bleached their days white with pain and turned them into something wonderful. The pain of others bleaches their own pain, turning it into something new. They knew that instinctively. Oh, they must be Satoko and Megu, I guess. Don't know which is which, though. So, Megu is the one talking right now. <laughs> the weather was nice today, so I went up to the roof. I'm gonna assume that's the one on the right. Uh, yep, it is. Okay, so the one on the right is Megu, and the one on the left is Satoko. 
And if I remember correctly, didn't Shiroyama say that Megu is his girlfriend? Perhaps? I, I can't remember. <laughs> and then I noticed there's actually a way to get up to the Building C rooftop. That won't work. You can only get up there by going through the Fine Arts Club, Fine Arts Club's tool room. Which means... We can't get in there, of course. That's not what I'm getting at. It means that no one would come, right? Oh, of course not. Let's join the Fine Arts Club. Huh? What are you talking about? There is no Fine Arts Club anymore. That club got next, didn't it? That's the best part. <laughs> you mean, just use the roof? Haha. <laughs> are you really going to join a club just to use the Building C rooftop? No, I'm actually super creative. I might not look like it, but I am an artist. I don't care if she does if she doesn't actually have a valley girl accent, but I whatever. That's just the voice I'm using for her because it fits. <laughs> You've only reached the second level in art class. The teachers just don't understand my art. Anyway, who cares about that? Let's remake the club. Don't you just want to go up there with your boyfriend? Ah, <laughs> bullseye, huh? <laughs> that might be part of it. You said you couldn't pay for a hotel, but would you really do it up there? No, that's not what I mean. It could just be a place for us to hang out. I doubt you'd just be hanging out. Who's the Fine Arts Club in Club's advisor? I'm gonna be the art teacher. There's not really any advisor anymore since the club is gone. I guess. Hmm. Senegawa, okay. I guess I have to, though I really don't want to. Come on, Mrs. Senegawa, don't say that. Ugh. Hmm. Mrs. Kobayashi, the art teacher, retired last year, so she can't be the advisor this year. You're the only one who can do it, Mrs. Senegawa. Yes, yes, I heard from Mrs. Kobayashi. She said she wanted me to be the advisor until next year. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have a new art teacher next year. That's not the problem. But Mrs. Kobayashi did ask me to do it. Now that you mention it, Mrs. Kobayashi was your mentor, right? Yes, so I have no talent for art at all. That's fine, I have no talent either. Uh, even if I'm the advisor, I'm not going to do much for you. Actually, I'd rather have you guys do all the work yourself. I'd like to take a hands-off approach to teaching. Of course! We'd prefer it that way. Hug! You need to say that much, dumbass. <laughs> Putting that aside, do you have the required four members? I will find enough members soon. You haven't already gotten enough members? Hmm. I have an idea who I want to ask, so it should be fine. Oh, well, okay. Try not to cause any trouble. Sure thing. We'll be fine. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about the voice I gave Satika there, but she seems like she has, like, a gruffer voice for a girl, and I can't really emulate that as a guy, but whatever. <laughs> a fine arts club formed just to use the rooftop. It existed only so they would have a place for themselves, where no one else would come. These two found that place. Ah, yeah. And then... Kimika? Okay. I forget what voice I gave her. <laughs> uh... Granted, we know, like, nothing... I know nothing about her so far. I shouldn't say we, but... Whatever. <laughs> uh... Placeholder voice until we get to know her. <laughs> but am I already in the track and field club and the science club? That's fine. We just want to use your name. You don't have to come to any club activities. <laughs> what, Tachibana? Are you gonna say no? Um, how many members do you need? Huh? Four people. Why? Which means the last person would be... Zakuro? Exactly. Hmm, and Zakuro can't refuse, can she? Zakuro joins, then so will I. <laughs> Huh? Do you think you have the right to refuse? That's right. You seem to be misunderstanding something lately, Tachibana. We've mostly been bullying Takashima, but that's your fault. <laughs> that's right. I'm glad Zakuro's here now. You're fucked up. <laughs> I stopped getting bullied because Zakuro's here, right? What's wrong with recognizing that fact? Yeah, whatever. Anyway, once Takashima joins, you're joining too. Yeah, if Zakuro refuses, I'm not joining. If you do that, you're dead. Takashima r really didn't want to join that hellish club. They only wanted to secure that space so they could bully people away from watchful eyes. How awful. But 
She couldn't make any other choice. She had no free will. This was the point when the bullying grew most severe. There was no way she could refuse. Their hidden lair was atop Building C. Other students wouldn't come there, and even the teacher's attention wouldn't fall on that deserted island. Every day after school, Takashima was locked up there and tormented. Torment that they called a game. The repeated whitewashing of their relationship. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm assuming that's a different type of whitewashing from the common societal definition of it. A ritual that they called playing. That was awesome. Takashima's face was great. Yeah, her face was fucking great. I guess putting wasabi on someone's face really does hurt. What was up with that doll she had? Yeah, she had some black doll, didn't she? I think Kimika gave that to her. Seriously? That endlessly repeating game. Neither killing her nor outright... Neither killing her outright nor letting her live. Just like a child playing with a bug. But that ended completely out of the blue. Neither killing her outright nor letting her live. As that game continued, they stopped holding back. At first, they were careful not to kill her. Carefully, carefully, they didn't want to kill her. But they grew accustomed to their role as tormentors over time. As they grew accustomed to it, they started to make mistakes. In one moment, it all ended. A child's game. The game was ended by the death of their toy. It ended when they broke their toy. And thus, their fun game came to an end. Hmm. Hey, Takashima! Nakasaka! Let's go up to the roof! Shut up. We're just going to do some club activities. Oh yeah, that's right. Let's go to our club. You too, Tachibana. <laughs> yeah, I have to go to track club today. It'll be fine. Just come for today. Is Sakura coming? You always ask that. You really like Takashima, huh? Is it that fun to bully someone? <laughs> of course we're bringing Takashima. You and Takashima are the main cast today. I see. Well then, what's our club to today? Probably nothing to do with fine arts. <laughs> It'll be fine. We'll have fun today. Let's go. Alright. <laughs> Sonagawa again. Oh. <laughs> ah. Oh, don't cause any problems. Got it. Oh, whatever. Hmm. Um. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, how? What is it? Hmm. <sighs> hmm. <laughs> Seriously, don't cause any problems. I'm just covering until we get a new art teacher, alright? <laughs> Which one's fucking talking? Okay. Yes, ma'am! Hmm. Hey, Tachibana. What? Tch. <laughs> You just tried to say something to Senegawa, didn't you? Don't do anything suspicious like that. Next time you're dead. Oh god. <laughs> she has a very evil glare, Kimika does. <laughs> um, Kimika? Takashima Zakura tried to reach out to Kimika, but Kimika sl coldly slapped her hand away. Kimika? Kimika laughed. You're so kind! Maybe you should worry about yourself over thinking of other people. Honestly, having someone like you sympathize with me kind of pisses me off. I have no idea what her personality is supposed to be. Honestly, what the fuck? She is the most confusing character so far. Other than Takuji, I guess, but still. <laughs> Kimika. The weather's great. Okay. It's getting nice and cool since fall is coming. Okay. Winter is co too cold, so we might not be able to play up here anymore. Huh? Well, maybe. I didn't really think of that. So we should have a whole lot of fun while we can. Sure. What kind of game do you want to play? <laughs> hey! Okay, Zakura, right? Yeah. Yes! Megu pointed toward Takashima's skirt pocket. I've been kind of curious for a while. What's up with that doll? Nah. Huh? Oh, that. Wait. No, that's Kimika talking. Oh, that. A strangely shaped black stuffed doll was hanging out of Takashima's pocket. It looked like it was ha hanging from a cell phone strap. That... Oh, no, that's just text. I got it. The doll was a bit too big to fit in her pocket. That stuff used to be popular years ago, didn't it? What is that? I thought it was a panda. 
It's black because Tachibana painted it and cast a spell on it. What a bad girl. <laughs> yeah, I painted it. Nah? Eh? I did that. I was the one who did that. Right, Sakura? Nah? Eh? Uh, that's... And how did you mention it? Tachibana had one just like it. Yeah. I do remember that. You had one just like it. Was that Zakuro? No, that was Satoko. I can't tell! <laughs> okay, who is it now? Okay, Megu. That was back when everyone in the class used to ignore Tachibana. No, oh, that's right. I remember that. Back then, they used to have the same exact thing on their phones. Do you know what that means, Satoko? What? Tachibana wanted to cheer up the stupid girl, so she bought her a matching panda doll. <laughs> Christ. We gave them to each other, though I threw mine right, mine away right after that. Right, Sakura? Eh? Uh, why would you say that? Tachibana threw hers away once she stopped getting bullied, but Takashima held onto hers forever and ever. What an idiot. <laughs> That's not true. She's not an idiot. She's just stupid and kind. <laughs> That's the exact same thing. Your back talk is starting to get on my nerves, Tachibana. Tachibana, you're clearly not understanding us. That's right. I was always bullied until he started bullying Zakura in my place, so I don't understand you at all. You're a pain in the ass, just like always. And why did you try to be friends with someone like Takashima anyways? That doll is like a symbol of your betrayal, isn't it? Why are you still carrying around that weird doll Tachibana painted for you? <laughs> nah, but it looks cute this way. It's cute because it's pure black like that. You're always super cut. Wait, wait, wait. That's Kimika. I can't tell most of the time. <laughs> it's cute because it's pure black like that. You're always super kind like that. Look, this is what I think. I don't really dislike Takashima all that much. She's a bit empty headed, but she's nice enough. That is Megu, okay? <laughs> but why would you keep believing someone who stabbed you in the back? Isn't that just psychological dependence? You sounded pretty smart there. Of course I did. That's not it. Wait, wait. No, is that Sakura? Okay. That's not it. I just like this doll. Look, it's all black, and it's so cute. <laughs> ah, she's so pure. <laughs> she's pure and kind. Yeah, Sakura is kind. And then once Takashima is the one getting bullied, Tachibana is the first in line to bully her. Maybe so. Wait, wait, no, that's Kimika. Maybe so. That's all I'm good for, right, Sakura? That's not true, Kimika. Kimika, you've... Am I different? That's just your imagination. I'm not your ally. I'm the worst person on the planet. I'm a traitor. But, Kimika! Let's play a game. <laughs> nah? Oh, boy. Huh? Okay, Christ. <laughs> a game? Yeah, the rules are simple. Oh, boy. I don't trust this. Nah? Uh, stop! Akasaka Megu forcefully yanked the protruding doll out of Takashima's pocket. It was old and worn, so it broke off from the phone easily. Give it back! Hey, Satago, catch! Oh, I don't want this nasty doll here. <laughs> ah! Kimika, give it back! Catch. Hurry up, hurry up! Never know what could happen to this doll if you don't hurry up. Here! Here it goes. <laughs> here it goes. No, give it back! Haha, <laughs> why? Why is this doll so important? You know, Tachibana threw hers away. Makimika bought this for me. Huh? Why would you say that? Kimika. Oh boy. Ah! Uh, did she, like, launch it off the roof? Ah! When Tachibana chucked the doll, it flew over the fence. Even Tachibana Kimika herself was too surprised to move. Ah! Uh-oh. What? Dumbass! The two of them grew pale as well. Takashima tried to go after it. She climbed the fence and then... The sound cut through the air immediately after. The sound of impact. Oh, God. <laughs> Takashima! Dumbass! Sakuro? That was weird? Takashima fell from a four-story building, but luckily she only hit the eaves of the third story before landing on the roof of the neighboring gymnasium. Oh. Okay. It wasn't a very long fall, so she didn't suffer any major injuries. Though maybe it's not accurate to say she was lucky. 
This is what I can gather from what they posted in their thread. It seems reliable since it was written by people who were there, the boys themselves. The details were probably exaggerated, but most of it was probably accurate. I see. So that's what happened. I heard that there was an accident, but... It seems like the school tried to cover up the incident. It was the school that said it was just an accident. They were actually talking about it in the other threads on the message board. Several students who were playing on the Building C rooftop fell and hurt themselves. This fence is especially low, so they closed the rooftop after that. There were actually places where the Building C rooftop had no fence at all, though that changed after the incident. But was that the reason? Akasaka and Kitami claimed it was just an accident that happened while they were playing up there. Takashima Zakura herself didn't deny it. At that time, lots of teachers decided that it must have been an accident. Especially after the Fine Arts Club advisor's testimony. Even though Senegaba had almost nothing to do with the club and wasn't there when it happened. Since they couldn't use the rooftop after that, the Fine Arts Club was disbanded. The bullying directed toward Takashima was reduced. Naturally, no one wanted to be seen bullying her in public after that happened. But still, Senegaba's attitude. She probably knew about the bullying when they tried to make the Fine Arts Club. Apparently, she told them repeatedly, don't cause any problems, and I'm a hands-off teacher. The cause of Takashima's death wasn't just Akasaka Megu, Kitami Satoko, and Tachibana Kimika. Senegawa was responsible as well. An accident during club activities. The four people who caused it weren't blamed at all. Takashima got out of the hospital after a few days, and that was the end of it. But apparently Takashima had kept looking for her lost doll. A panda doll, painted black. She'd kept searching for it. Hmm. So she was looking for a black doll. I looked away from my computer and checked her cell phone. It would have been attached to the phone in place of a strap, but it couldn't have been all that big. Now the phone only has a few thin straps attached to it. What's this? I thought the black strings were just a frayed cell phone strap, but... This has to be... I didn't notice it before, but the phone kind of smelled. It smelled like a butchery, or rather a slaughterhouse. Was that hair? This is... I pulled on the strap and... And... Changed into something completely unlike a cell phone strap. I pulled it out and it was a lock of hair. Oh, great. Oh, crap, I did not mean to right-click. No. It wasn't just a lock of hair. A lock of hair growing out of a fragment of her skull. Ah, that thing. Great. Slowly came out. This is the reason it smells. A piece of a human's dead body. It should be. Scary enough to make a person jump in fear when they see it. And, 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 and yet. This is what happened to her. I'm c completely calm. Completely c calm. Completely calm. Poor thing. Did it hurt? Look how calm I am. My voice isn't shaking at all. I'm not getting emotional at all. Just analytical words. Just like an onlooker. Don't worry. I'm here for you. I, I calmly spoke to that piece of Takashima. Normal people would be so scared and emotional that they couldn't even t t talk. And yet... Ah, woohoo, look at that. <laughs> Completely calm, very calm, totally calm, absolutely calm, diving calm, ridiculously calm, rather calm, kind of calm, frightened calm, clearly calm, kind of calm, rather calm, happy and calm, just calm, very calm, precisely calm, peachy calm, quite calm, suicide calm, lonely calm, Buddha calm, analog calm, Neonfo calm, Antarctic calm, raw calm, calm, samurai calm, super calm, calm as ever, calm all day, always calm, running calm, sitting calm, as calm as can be, everything's calm, calm all my life, getting calmer, already calm, calmer than I thought, calmer than I thought possible, even calmer, calm at heart, utterly calm, superman calm, calm at last, <sighs> suddenly calm, almost as if I'm calm, almost as if I'm calm, almost as if I'm calm, am I not calm? After all, I am a piece of God. Because my existence is beyond human. Because I've surpassed humanity. Yes, thanks to the Archangel Riruru, <laughs> I've begun to climb the stairway that leads beyond humanity. I am the person who ascends the stairs to God. I am the person within the omen. I am the person who ascends to divinity. I am the person walking toward that omen. I am the person walking toward July 20th. I am the person who will return it to the sky. Yes, my mother said that. Yes, Riruru said that. I will return, the people and the world, to the place where Takashima and the place where my mother have already returned, to the end sky. 
Yes, that is the end sky. That will come to fruition and bring it all to an end. That is not death, neither is it life. It is neither heaven nor hell. It will just come to fruition and then bring it all to an end. That's how it is. That's how it is. I am not human. My existence has surpassed humanity, just like my mother did. I too have surpassed humanity. Humans call me the savior. They call me the person who will save the world. That's why. I wasn't swayed when I saw a fragment of Takashima's skull. Rather, I felt pity. Takashima. It must have been painful. The day before, Takashima's ghost had come to visit me. She kept saying, it hurts, it hurts, over and over. It must have been painful. It must have been extremely painful. That's why she came to me, and yet, I was still immature, so I ran from her. I ran from her, even when she came to me looking for relief from her pain. I'm sorry. Please come visit me again soon. Next time I'll embrace you, like I should have from the start. No matter how she looks, I'll embrace her, because she is my lover. We shared our secrets, and we were fated to be married. I fucked her desk. <laughs> Even our entry into the same school was decided so that we could be together in the future. It was all decided ahead of time. She loved me. I don't really remember it, but I'm sure she always loved me. Now I can understand that. So it's fine. I can meet her at any time. Just look. If I just play the video on my computer, she will appear before me. Her two-dimensional form. She is so cute. I can't see it. Oh, wait. I can't see it! I can't see any great disaster! Open your eyes! No, no! Riveru! Eek! Riveru, listen to me! Fear is a shapeless monster. It clowns the mind and beckons the worst possible outcome. If we falter here, the world will be destroyed. Could you let that happen? Riveru, I could. What? I don't care if the world is destroyed. I don't want to die. Why don't you just die and leave us alone? Uh, what's wrong with you two? To the sky. No. Ah. Look, I can see her anytime I want. On my computer, I can see her anytime I want. That's a rather convenient age we live in. Since we can use computers to talk to the dead. Well, it's not like just anyone could do that. Well, whatever. More importantly... After I removed the piece of flesh from the cell phone, I started investigating the information on it. Um... I wasn't used to this phone, but as the savior, I could easily make use of any device. While looking through the past threads on the message board, I opened up Takashima's sent messages. I wonder what she was talking about and who she was talking to. I looked at her sent items. What's this? Suspicious. It was definitely suspicious. Because that message was... From Takashima. Okay. To death I have been reborn as a warrior. Or so they said, but it hurts. I have no body, but it still hurts. It hurts because I've been broken. Therefore, everyone must die. You will die in eight days. All of you will die. Hmm. What is this? I stayed calm and soon realized what was suspicious. What? This was sent at- This is strange. Takashima committed suicide on the evening of July 12th. This message was sent at 10.44 p.m. This message was definitely sent after her death. What does that mean? I stayed calm and quickly figured it out. That means Takashima has been sending these messages after her death. I see. So that's why Takashima came to me last night. An analytical mind. A normal human would never notice this. So she came to me in order to send this message because I accidentally stole her phone. Sorry about that. Huh? I was a little shocked when I saw who she was sending it to. Why are there so many recipients? The recipients were still in the history. It was simultaneously sent to 158 people. What is this? This number is... <laughs> You're awfully mischievous, Takashima. Hmm. The number of people she sent the message to was the exact same as the number of people registered on the underground message board. Which means Takashima looked at the register on my computer and used that to send a message to all these people. <laughs> oh wow, you know this is a violation of their privacy. Though she is a ghost, I guess she doesn't care about anyone's privacy. But I'm no longer a normal human, so you can't go do- so you can't do stuff like that anymore. I'm the savior. Even if she is a ghost, I can't let her do something like that to me. Next time we meet, I'll have to scold her. She can come talk to me if there's something she wants to do. Anyway, maybe I should send this message again. 
I sent the same message to all the same addresses simultaneously. I see. Now it says six days. I changed it to say six days instead of eight. It's important for the savior to pay attention to detail. Um, and then Akasaka, Kitami, and Tachibana. Tachibana, huh. In a way, Tachibana is the guiltiest of them all, but you could also say she's a victim. Only those who have been bullied themselves can understand. But it can get bad enough to make someone sell out their own friends in order to escape. I wonder if I should drive her into a corner too. I guess I can ask Takashima. More importantly, the one who definitely can't be forgiven, Senegawa. As a teacher, she had the responsibility to help Takashima. I have to give these three a different punishment from the rest. A punishment called fear. That's what I will give them. Luckily, I have all of their email addresses. They're all registered on the underground message board. Now then, what message shall I send to them? I probably shouldn't overthink it. Something simple will be scarier. That's right. I gave it a few minutes thought. Probably just a few minutes. I don't know how long I spent thinking of it, but anyway, this is what I sent to those three. Ah, yep. That's what I sent them. But just sending it would be boring. I set up my computer to automatically send them the same message every hour. My computer would use Takashima's email address to send them that scary message once an hour. <laughs> it would be pretty scary seeing this in your inbox every hour. <laughs> this is the first game. The game those dumb bitches played with Takashima. It's the same game, but better. Hope you guys have fun. Now it's your turn to be played with. After that, I looked at the message board. I guess her death and the ensuing messages from her had quite the impact, since the message board was full of posts about it. Now that I think of it, Shiroyama died too. Oh! He did die! And he even fell from the roof. I hadn't noticed at all. The date was July 10th. Oh, that's right, he was doing drugs on the roof. He died then? Oh! Okay. <laughs> then what the hell are Nishimura and Numata doing then? And Inuma. They were talking about whether they were going to do LSD or some hallucinogen like that. Did he jump while he was high on that stuff? Well, I guess it doesn't really matter at all that much now. But it's probably just a coincidence. But Shiroyama and Takashima both died. To the ignorant masses, it must have looked like the deaths were related. Coupled with the messages from Takashima, it seemed even more ominous to the people on the message board. <laughs> As I read more, I realized something. Huh. Actually, I forgot. Takashima was registered on this message board, too. After registering, she never posted until just before her death. I guess that's hardly surprising considering her personality. And yet... Big Hazard is coming. The sealed Nevis uses a specialized physics bug, i.e. an outer magic dark summons bug, to plant negative thoughts in the human race. This is the true nature of the battle between the dictators and tyrants of the world. Hitler, Genghis Khan, Marie Antoinette, etc., and us, the peasants, the revolutionaries, the proletariat. Shiriyama Tsubasa was infected by this specialized physics bug. The Nevis used him to degrade me, the phenomenon of inducing a low-energy state with a negative energy blast, and the reason is because the Nevis will soon awaken. Big Hazard is coming. A great disaster will occur. She suddenly started a, a threat on July 11th. The date was the day before she committed suicide. After that, she'd posted several more times. That thread was full of trolls up until the day of her suicide. Was it all a coincidence? Shiroyama's death, Takashima's thread, Takashima's suicide, and then the messages from Takashima. They're all pointing in the same direction. That direction is toward July 20th. My mother believed, Takashima believed, the world's last day. Though, there was. There was a reason my mother started to believe that prediction. At the time, my mother had just had joined a new wave religion. The religion's founder said that the world would be destroyed on July 20th, 2012. Apparently there are lots of people in Mexico, India, and other places in the world that believe that. Mexico's prophecy is prophecy in the Piedra del Sol, the prophecy of India's high priest. Here we will supposedly crash into the photon belt. By the way, the photon belt is just what it sounds like. It's a field of energy made up of photons that's thought to be in our galaxy. Our solar system rotates around Alcyone, the largest star in the Pleiades star cluster once every 26,000 years. Supposedly every 11,000 years, there is a 2,000 year period where the Earth passes through the photon belt. Because of the strong magnetic fields in the photon belt, 
Many great disasters happen on Earth, and the genes of many organisms undergo a large change. During these 2,000 years, the entire world changes. The changes would mean the extinction of the human race and the appearance of a new form of humanity. The beginning of that 2,000 year period is supposed to be July 20th, 2012. That's not the only prophecy for 2012. There's a more important prediction, or rather a calculation. That is, the WebBot project. My mother believed in it. When I was a child, she told me over and over that the collective human unconsciousness could show us the world's ultimate fate. She often described it as the sky being full of anxious words. My mother believed in the WebBot project, and she believed in that prediction. The WebBot project is a program that reads the unconscious thoughts of the people on the internet. Why would people's unconscious thoughts be important? There's a famous concept underlying this program. Carl Gustav Jung pioneered analytical psychology. He saw a strange commonality between the mental images all of his patients held. It also matched up with the legends and myths from all different parts of the world. The conclusion he came to was... There exists a collective unconscious that unites all of humanity. Humanity shares the same unconscious. This theory led to several other supernatural theories. For instance, synchronicity. The coincidence of multiple related events occurring simultaneously in the world. Normally, someone would assume that the events occurring simultaneously are just a coincidence. But are they? To give an example, for instance, how do we know that ca causality is a result of the external forces that we can see and not something beyond explanation hidden within the objects? If humanity has a collective unconscious, it must be shared in some form. What if all of humanity is actually acting as one organism? Humanity is a group of individuals in one whole. One whole and yet a group of individuals. Both part and whole, whole and part. Just like the individual living cells of a human being create a larger organism. Just like a single pawn obeys the rules of the entire game of chess, and the entire game of chess obeys the rules of a single pawn. An individual is the entirety and the entirety is an individual. On an unconscious level, humanity is a single organism. Therefore, if one could understand the collective unconscious of the people on the internet, they'd be able to understand the will of humanity as a whole. No, they would know the will of God himself. Some people believe that. That is the WebBot project. The WebBot project predicted that the world would be destroyed on July 20th, 2012. The big hazard that Takashima spoke of. The WebBot project also made one other important prediction. In 2012, the Savior will appear. It actually wasn't just the WebBot project that made this prediction. One of the Indian Farseers predicted the same thing. But they say he will appear from the sky. Who is the Savior? There are still some arguments about it. My mother knew it long before my birth since she was a prophet. She knew that her son would save the world. That's why she always punished me so severely. Not as a mother, but as a person who had given birth to the Savior. Those memories are full of nothing but pain. That's why I used to hate my mother. But now I understand. Now I can say it with confidence. My mother truly loved me. She probably wanted to love me as a human mother. She probably wanted to embrace me. And yet, actually, the day the world will return to the sky. She was kind when she was telling me about that day. And the other time she put me through hell. My earliest memories from the moment I was born are of pain. The bullying I received at school was actually one of the trials my mother set before me. She programmed my life so that others would torment me even after her death. The reason she could do that was because she was a prophet. She knew everything. That's the only explanation. My analytical mind has revealed her plans. I have to solve this grand, inscrutable puzzle in order to save the world. I put the pieces together one by one. The will of the world. I understood my mother's will. I am the savior. I've, ob I've attained unfathomable... Unfath... Unfath... Oh my god, why can't I say that? Unfathomable knowledge and wisdom. My mother could see the past and the future of this world. She created this program that stretches from the past into the future. Now I can see the whole picture. That's not all. I can feel the pain she must have gone through, being forced to live as a prophet rather than a mother. It must have been difficult. It must have been sad. She must have wanted to live a normal life with me, but she chose. She chose to be a prophet. She chose to save the world. Rather than be a mother. Maybe it was my mother's will that killed my lover as well. Maybe Takashima was killed by my mother's program. She was powerful enough to make it happen. Now I understand. Now that I have gained my powers as the savior. I understand that my mother was almost omnipotent. I was born to save the world. I was born from that almighty existence. What does that mean? That's right, she was obsessed with the WebBot project. 
She knew the importance of the collective unconscious. Jung called the harmonization of conscious thoughts and actions individuation. That's not a metaphor. It means the humanity's unconscious is a single organism. Then what is that single organism? That is, that is what the Savior's mother was. Humanity needed a Savior. Therefore, humanity gave birth to a Savior. On this earth, so just. What is that single unconscious that humanity has? What is the collective unconscious? That was none other than my mother. She was able to give birth to me because she was the embodiment of the human unconscious itself. She gave birth to the savior who would save humanity. I guess that's why. At first, the WebBot project didn't work properly. It wasn't just effective and wouldn't start at all. Then one day, it started working all on its own, and it was perfectly accurate. Since the time the WebBot project started working, I've never forgotten to check it. Every time a major event has happened, I've checked the predictions, and it's always there. I overlooked most predictions because there were so many, but every time I checked after a major event, it was always on the list. Why did the WebBot project start working after my mother's death? At first, I didn't understand it, but now I do. My mother died to prepare for the world's death, because my mother was the will of the world itself. I cried when I realized it. My mother's love, humanity's wonder. I couldn't stop my overflowing tears. There are six days until the world will be destroyed, until the world will return to the sky. I'll save it. I cried as I declared that. God made the world in six days, and then he rested on the f and then he rested on the final day. What can the Savior do in six days? I'll return as many people to the sky as I can, before the world is destroyed. That is the will of the world. That is my mother's will. That's just how it is. The day that the world will return to the sky is not the day that the world will be destroyed. Someone must return the world to the sky before it is destroyed. That is the day when the world will return to the sky. The world's destruction will occur on July 20th, which means the world must return to the sky on the day before. How many will I be able to return to the sky? That is, my mission is the savior. But is that possible? The single person returning the world to the sky? The answer is, it's possible. The savior is the person who knows the truth. The person who holds all knowledge of life on this planet, not just human history. With Riru's guidance, I've experienced the unconscious of life itself. That was a journey of millions, even billions of years. All knowledge and wisdom, all skill and experience, the person who has obtained all is the savior. I have grasped the truth. Now that I know the truth, a week is the same as millions, billions, trillions, or even quadrillions of years to me. With the truth I've grasped, the impossible becomes possible. <laughs> that truth is, huh? My queer analytical thoughts were suddenly interrupted. My clarity suddenly disappeared. <sighs> what is it? I should have all knowledge. I should have all wisdom. I should have all experience. And yet, what's happening? Can't remember the millions of years I experienced last night. Why? Damn it! I calmly analyzed it. The human brain only has a capacity of 1350 to 1500 cc. They say that a human brain can have up to a trillion neurons. That number doesn't change very much until old age. I can assume that, as the savior, my brain should have several hundred times as many neurons. But still, it's not enough to remember all of, uh, all of the memories and experiences from several billion years of life. So then I can conclude that, even though I'm the savior, I still have certain physical limitations. Then why was I able to see it last night? Why was I able to see the unconscious of all life? It was just a few seconds. In those seconds, I was able to absorb all the memories and experiences of life throughout the past several billion years. Why? A normal person can never understand the logic and genius of my thoughts. My genius pursued as... Uh, uh, and... My, wow. My genius pursued an as of... Pursued an as of yet hidden truth. Okay, got it. That means I need an external processor. An external information processor. Not a mathematical processor, but rather something closer to a neural network. No, it should be a brain itself, I suppose. Ah, that's what it was. That's it. She was acting as a receiver. She connected me, the savior, to all of humanity. No, to all of life. At that time, I had power rivaling that of God. <laughs> I see. I started to understand what it means to be the savior. The savior isn't God. I'm still closer to being human. No, my body structure actually is nothing more than human. So I can't escape to the basic limitations of humanity. But the savior isn't human. Why is that? Yes, through the angels he becomes a god. It is with the aid of an angel that the savior is able to become a god. 
So when I'm with Ririru, I become a living god. She's the connection between me and God. That's the answer. That's the answer. <laughs> I've solved all the riddles. I've found all the answers. What the Savior must do. What the child of God must do. What the Savior can do. What the Savior can't do. What God can do. What God can't do. It has all been revealed. That which God cannot do is that which I must do. The things I can do that God can't. The things I can do because I am human. First, I must descend upon the world of the commoners. I must enter the world of the commoners. And I must be polluted by the human world. God can't allow himself to be polluted by the human world. Therefore, he can never interact with humans. The person who can be polluted is able to enter the, enter the world of humans. A perfectly holy existence is unable to delve into the human world. The sun can't come to earth for the same reason. His holiness would incinerate the polluted humans. That's why I must do this. I can act as the savior because I can allow myself to be polluted. So I must go to the humans and be polluted. I must be polluted by the filthy humans. To the world of the commoners. I must accomplish these, those great works that gods may not. Jesus Christ, dude. Alright, wowee. I did not expect that scene to go on for so long. Like 20 minutes ago, I thought he was going to shut up. <laughs> When he was just like, I am the savior, and I will save the world! End. And then he's just like, no, I'm gonna go on the message board, and I'm gonna talk about Ririru for like, th three minutes straight. And then I'm gonna talk about my mother for the remaining 17. <laughs> ah, that was an interesting episode, that's for damn sure. Thankfully, nothing I have to censor, even though this is definitely the longest episode yet. But either way, that's going to be it for this episode. If you liked it, then be sure to press the like button. And if you didn't like it, then fuck you too. Remember to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my videos and stuff. And as always, my name is Godzi, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye!